being an artist and making art is a bit of a chaotic process sometimes. And so the practice of being in the garden allows for a negative or an empty space of thought. The garden is an interesting thing because it's the same every time you look at it. The lines are always consistent, but in fact, I remake it every day. I rake the leaves out, I clean it, and I restore the pattern. So it has this kind of impermanence that is the same. It's an impermanence and a permanence at the same time. This dual exhibition, which is taking place across both galleries in Paris and New York with Emmanuel Perrotin, is a celebration of this 20 years that we've been working together. I think it's quite rare for artists to have this type of relationship with a gallery for that long. Drawing was the first thing that I thought of as a unique sort of personal expression probably the medium that I feel most comfortable with. It's the most immediate. Some of it is very loose sketches, very simple ideas, and some are more realized or thought out complete works. So I've split a hundred drawings across both galleries, and that's the kind of work, like a preparatory drawing, which I've never shown publicly before. I think looking, especially in the painting works, for images that sort of float in time, right? You look at them and cannot tell when that image should exist. They look like something that you might find from the ancient past as a relic of an ancient civilization, but they contain imagery and objects from your own life. So logically, they should be from the future. These stratified works, which are actually, in many cases, ancient Greek or Roman busts that have been sliced into these different sort of almost geological stratifications that are made of wood, polished bronze, polished stainless steel, patinated bronze. But the classical works all came about through a collaboration with the Louvre Museum in Paris and I gained access to their mold library. So I was able to create works which were based on ancient Greek works, ancient Roman works, all the way up through French neoclassical works that were recast in my own materials. Volcanic ash, quartz, amethyst. These materials that make us think very differently about the object versus it being sculpted in marble. In some ways, the sculpture, once they're created, they also sort of float in time. Cars and racing were, you know, part of my youth, and my grandfather always had a camera around his neck and instilled this love of photography for me. I had the opportunity to link with Lucasfilm and the company around an idea of integrating the Star Wars universe and combining it with my own. So for this exhibition, I've created a number of works, an R2-D2, C-3PO, some stormtroopers, a bust of Vader, and thinking about them almost like if we look at sculpture from antiquity. George Lucas also had an obsession around allowing the Star Wars universe to kind of float in time. Those sorts of connections between the Star Wars universe and my own seem to make sense, and we're, we're collaborating together on a number of works for the show. We imagine time as moving in one direction forward, right? But there's a confusion in the work where we look at it and we don't know whether it's moving forward in time or it's actually reversing 